undertaking of the Regeneration and Sustainable Development Scrutiny Committee on this Friday morning, the 25th of June, 2021. <clears throat> Just to make you all aware, today's meeting will be recorded. Can I also welcome members of the public and press to today's meeting? Can I kindly ask you to observe the meeting only and not speak or participate? Can I please remind you all to switch your phones to silent for the duration of the meeting? And I can, can I refer you to the protocol for remote meetings which have been previously uh, circulated? Namely, your microphone should be switched to mute unless you are speaking. Should you wish to ask a question or make a comment, can you please indicate either via the chat function or by raising your electronic hand? I will assume that you have all read the paperwork before us today, prior to this meeting, and please only use the chat function to indicate if you wish to speak um, as an alternative to the electronic hand function, or <coughs> raise any technical issues, of course. When asking a question, can you please indicate what page number you're referring to? Uh, and I will take you now to the first item on the agenda to do the roll call. I am Councillor Steve Ant and I'm here this morning. Can I now ask Chloe from the Democratic Service Office, <coughs> uh, the Democratic Service Officer, to take us through the roll call, please? Chloe. Thank you, Chair. I've marked you as present. Councillor Rachel Taylor. Present, Chloe. Councillor Dean Causey. Present, Chloe. Councillor Chris Jones. Present, Chloe. Councillor Hugh James. Chloe, present. Councillor Sheila Penry. Present, Chloe. Councillor Sean Percy. Present. Councillor Saifa Harman. Present. We've had apologies from Councillor Nigel Hunt. Councillor Scott Bamsey. Councillor Jamie Evans. Councillor Simon Noyle. I'm here, thanks, Chloe. And Cabinet Members, Councillor Annette Wingrave. Present, Chloe. We've had apologies from Councillor Leanne Jones, Councillor Peter Richards. Present, Chloe. And Officers, Nicola Pierce. Simon Brennan. Present, Chloe. Kerry Morris. Uh, present, Chloe. Anna Bynan. Present. Mike Shaw. Yes, present, Chloe. Thank you. And Nicola Heedon. Present, Chloe. Have I missed any officers? Nope, I think that's everyone, Chair. Thank you. Thank you for that, Chloe. Next item on the agenda is the Chair's announcement. We have chosen to scrutinise only item six on the Cabinet Board agenda this morning. And we as members are all happy with the private reports going to Cabinet for decisions today as in items 10, 11, 12 and 13. The next item on the agenda is declarations of interest. So can members please indicate whether they have any declaration in relationship to the item we have chosen to scrutinise? I see none. That will move me on to the item four, the minutes of the previous meeting. There are two sets of minutes today, members, included on the agenda for approval. They're on pages 5 to 24. Can I just ask members if they have any comments to make on either sets of minutes before we move them? Uh, they're mainly for accuracy, but if there's anything members see on these minutes that they need to raise, can you raise it now, please? I don't see anybody. So can I have uh, a proposal second for the minutes dated the 16th of April 2021, please? Can we propose? I propose it, Chair. I'll propose. There we are, and second, Dean. There we are, Dean, second. And um, can I have a proposal and second for the minutes dated the 14th of May 2021, please? I propose, Chair. Chair. There we are. You've got that, Chloe, proposal and second that? Yeah. Thank you. Right, that'll take us to um, <coughs> pre decision scrutiny, uh, as previously mentioned. We have chosen to scrutinise item six uh, from the Cabinet Board agenda today, which is the Active um, Travel Wales Act uh, 2013. Consideration of requirements for the consultation draft Active Travel Network Map, which is uh, the ATN 
M for Neath Port Talbot and the publication and consultation procedures to be implemented. Now, this report is on pages 7 to 110. Uh, as I said, the report is for decision, and the report officer here this morning is Kerry Morris, and I believe he has an abundant also in attendance in today's meeting uh, who will assist him. Um, so um, I will hand over to you now, Kerry, if you want to give a brief summary before we go to any questions from members. Over to you, Kerry. Thank you. Yes, th thank you, Chair. Um, as as you rightly said, what I'll do, what I'll do Chair, I'll, I'll I'll very briefly uh, give members a flavour of the report, and, and both Lana and myself would be happy to answer any queries or questions members have then. Um, but as I say, very briefly, the report is to agree um, the latest version of the Council's active travel network map uh, for consultation purposes, and also, as you said, Chair, to, to agree the consultation procedures. Um, this report is, is it meets essentially the requirement to review uh, the council's map um, every three years. Um, the map will ultimately need to be submitted uh, to the Welsh Government for ministerial approval um, at the end of the calendar year by the 31st of December. Um, members will, of course, already be afraid with the fact that active travel has a very specific meaning in Wales. Um, it's, it's for everyday purposeful journeys to work, to school, to shops and doesn't include so trips trips made specifically for sort of leisure um, or, or, or social reasons. Um, th there's two elements two elements to the map. Uh, there are existing routes, which are essentially those routes that already meet active travel standards set by the Welsh Government and what the Council already publicise as suitable routes. Uh, and there's also future routes, which are the um, aspirational uh, aspirations of the council for the next 15 years, um, and that's either improvements to existing routes or indeed identification of new routes to be added to the network going forward. I think it's important to stress for members that it's it's not a commitment to deliver, um, so it's essentially just a tool really to enhance the forward planning of active travel routes going forward. Um, in terms of the methodology that, that's been applied, I'll briefly touch on this, Chair. Um, it's been developed sort of in joint working between Sustrans and, and, and local authorities across, across the regions, and that therefore then ensures that there's consistency in approach across sort of administrative boundaries, because obviously active travel routes don't, um, don't stop at, 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 at the edge of Neath Patalba, they continue, so it's important that we have a consistent approach um, across across administrative boundaries. Um, the team conducted an initial consultation at the back end of uh, 2020, early part of 2021, and that was essentially the first stage of the process. Um, we had an extremely good response. O over two and a half thousand responses were received, uh, and that has been fed in in terms of the process. And essentially what we were looking for at that stage was to gauge opinion, public opinion, stakeholder opinion in terms of what is good and what is bad about the network in, in, in NPT at this point in time. Um, there's also uh, been an audit of existing routes, and I think Chair, page 11 of the report sets out, I think, 10 routes that have been added to the existing routes. Um, and there's also been an element of obviously information gathering and journey mapping, which which has looked at sort of what journeys are being made, you know, what 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 are the departure and destination points? Where are the desire lines that are that are identified across across the authority? Uh, the, the last stage of the methodology will be to prioritize the routes, but this hasn't been completed yet, and that will be that element of the methodology will be completed after the consultation stage, and that will sort of set out the schedule of routes in terms of short, medium, and longer term aspirations for the council. So that's 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 basically a very very broad overview, uh, Chair. Um, uh, and as I said, Lana and I myself are, are more than happy to answer any questions that members have. Thank you for that, Kerry. Lana, at this stage, did you want to add anything to the brief report for members prior to questions? No, that's fine, Chair. That's fine. Thank you, Lana. Uh, in pre-briefing, uh, there was a couple of questions, and I'm sure the members may have some. Uh, so I go to who indicated first, and that's uh, over to Sean, uh, Councillor Sean Percy, please. 
Thanks, thanks, Chair. Um, if, if you don't mind, and apologies for not doing this in advance, but I, can I just clarify um, with, with our legal officer, Mike Shaw, uh, my position on, the, on this item, uh, please, Chair? Um, yes, certainly. Yeah, um, there had been some discussion in the past around this as I contributed to the consultation. Um, obviously, today we're, we're not agreeing the final maps. We're, we're agreeing a further stage of consultation. So, um, can I just check with Mike whether it's okay for me to um, pass comment and 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 vote, etc., in this particular meeting or or not? Yes. Um, forgive me, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. If there are no um, interests that you can uh, identify here, Councillor Percy, yes, of course, by all means, you can participate. There are, you know, there are there are responses in the report which um, which I which I wrote as consultation responses, but I suppose they've been bundled in as part of the whole uh, the whole thing. Uh, so I'm not really sure how uh, <laughs> how, yes. how that uh, works. I I wouldn't anticipate a difficulty in that respect then. Thank, thanks. I just wanted to clarify that. Um, th thanks, Mike. Um, right. So, yeah, I'll um, forgive me if my connection cuts out. I've been struggling a little bit this morning. Um, but yeah, no, thanks. Thanks for putting the report together, uh, uh, Kelly and Alana, on this one. Um, it, it's been a bit strange reading it actually because we've kind of had spoilers for the consultation responses, and that we could sort of see them coming in on that commonplace map. Um, uh, sort of in in real time almost, um, but it's been interesting reading them today. Uh, well, re reading through the report and 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 seeing some of the the other responses, perhaps that I'd that I'd missed, and actually looking at this new draft map that's been created as a result of it. And it's quite clear that that future route map has been quite heavily informed by those consultation responses. And it's it's always reassuring to see a really strong link between the feedback from the public and and sort of the the draft map um, and obviously alluding to what I've just discussed with Mike I can see some of my suggestions and feedback of evident on the map which is which is also nice um, and you know in part that was from my consultation response but in part that was from the the discussions that happened with local members as well um, and I think it was it's worth pointing that out because it is only briefly mentioned in the report I think in in the um, the EIA somewhere um, but you know, local member consultation did take place as well, um, and you know they're not my responses as such as a walker and cyclist as well. They are responses that um, you know the public have given me feedback on in the last four years, and I've been able to pass on as a member. Um, and I just thought it was important to sort of emphasise that we've been given that opportunity um, because although we've had this wonderful one thousand plus responses to the consultation report, you know it, we've not reached everybody. Um, but even speaking to somebody like like my mum who likes to cycle, um, who would definitely not have um, you know taken part in the consultation, I've been able to pick up even things that impact her um, on her um, active travel journey. So. Um, I just wanted to uh, sort of acknowledge that and, and I suppose thank the officers and Sestrans for taking the time to, to to do all that and take our views into account. Um, but seeing the scale of it this time and, and that number of, I think was it 324 kilometres of, of routes, I think that's quite staggering, isn't it? It's it's quite, um, yeah, it's quite striking to see that uh, written down now, um, but also that's quite exciting. But there's a couple of small little things I wanted to pick up, and I'm afraid, Kerry, one of them is something you, you said as well that you picked out of the report. Um, and and it, it's a little thing, but it's, it's sort of niggling me a little bit, and it's about the it not being a commitment to deliver. And I completely accept that's a factual um, and correct statement that the network map is not a commitment. But I do feel we sort of ought to qualify it a little bit that with a commitment that we'll endeavour to deliver the routes proposed. And I just feel that would perhaps better reflect the aspirations of members in terms of this piece of work. Um, so I just feel it's not quite strong enough in the way we're writing that. And I, I totally get why it's in there, Kerry. Um, and it is important to clarify that we're not absolutely committing to do all of this, but um, I'm sure uh, I'm not speaking for myself here, that members would certainly like to see these routes delivered um, if possible. And, and I feel that we should make that point really clear in, in any future in, in future reports. So I just wanted to give that a nudge. 
Um, and the other the other thing was, um, you know, members and officers will know that, you know, in the last discussion we had, we, I mentioned about resourcing of active travel routes um, and the delivery of the routes, sorry, is something that I've been sort of keen on highlighting. And I just wanted to say that, I, you know, I've been following up on that issue. I've had some discussions with um, with cabinet members who are, I, I know are going to have some discussions ongoing with officers as well. And I just kind of wanted to highlight to the committee that that there's been some follow up. Um, from myself on that outside of, of, of this um, of this arena and I'm not sure whether one of the cabinet members wants to say anything on that today but um, I, have, I have had a discussion with with both um, Mike and Annette um, on my concerns on that um, but the other thing I wanted to pick up and, and I guess a promising thing which I've spotted in the report and, and an, another thing I want to nudge the cabinet members on is um, about the potential for perhaps revenue maintenance funding at some point, um, there's a kind of little uh, mention there that Welsh Government may be considering um, something something along those lines. And I think, you know, that's going to get increasingly important as the networks grow. Um, but what I kind of want to nudge for the, again for the Cabinet members here is the current situation of um, cycle route maintenance being split across multiple responsibilities, depending on where the routes are, um, is something that may need to be looked at. Um, to make sure that any additional funding that comes in is sort of used in the right places um, and and in uh, and prioritised correctly, um, because we have got some peculiar situations where one length of route um, is is multiple uh, falls under multiple uh, departments' responsibilities, um, and it's sometimes challenging to get the priority of the spending the money in the right place because perhaps the wrong department has the budget in the in the in the right year. Um, so I wanted to flag that up as well. But uh, other than that, um, I, it's exciting to see this move forward. I'm happy with what's proposed in terms of the consultation. I'm really pleased that we're going back into the commonplace platform, and and I'm assuming that that's going to this time be populated with all these lines for people to visualise what's proposed and perhaps pick out some little things that might be missing. Because I've spotted a couple of things which I'll be um, which I'll be feeding back, um, looking at the final maps as well to, um, recently. So um, thank you uh, for, uh, yeah, thanks for listening to my uh, long rambles as usual. And, uh, and thanks again for the report. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you for that, Sean. Be uh, before I bring Kerry in to respond, uh, can I go to the Cabinet member, uh, uh, Councillor Wingrave first, please? Annette? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, yes, Sean, um, actually, I went on leave the day after a meeting. I'm not back in work yet until Monday, officially. So once I'm back in, um, I'll, I'll contact officers. Uh, I have sent an email off, but I will contact the officers to arrange that meeting. Um, regarding the cross-cutting of departments, um, yeah, it's one of many, actually. It's not the only one. I have problems right across the board with this, and I think that's more of um, some of the democratic services to have a look at because it does hinder. I know it hinders a lot of processes. Um, we will take it on board. I mean, that's something I have to speak to other cabinet members about as well. I can't just step in and say I'm grabbing that or I'm giving you that, or, but we will deal with it. Thank you. Thank you, Annette. Yeah, over to you then, Kerry, for a response to Sean's points and questions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I, 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 I just wanted to just quickly come back on on the, the phrase I used, commitment to deliver. I, I, I totally agree and understand where where Councillor Percy is coming from, and I, I just wanted to clarify, I, I suppose, the point I made. I think, I think, I think the commitment that we are making as a council is that in producing this map, we are committing to improving the network year on year. Okay, I think that's that's perhaps where the clarification need, needs to be. I think. I think we we had a discussion um, at, with chief officers at, at CDG, obviously uh, in advance of of bringing the the report forward to members, and and it was felt that um, we needed to emphasise the point, um, not committing to deliver the full package, because ultimately, you know, the funding and the delivery of the schemes is not included within existing budgets. So I think it's important for members to, to ha have knowledge of that. You know, it, we we've, we've not got the resources in place to deliver all of the aspirations on the on the plan, albeit as I've said. You know there is a commitment to improve the network year on year. Um, funding is is a real issue. Um, uh, you know, Councillor Percy has picked up on, on, on quite rightly on the maintenance issues. You know, it, it does create a pressure going forward uh, because the more routes you have uh, on the ground, the more maintenance that you've got to deliver. And currently, the way the Welsh government funding is set up, you know, we're not having revenue funding to to, to meet that requirement. All we're getting at the moment is the capital expenditure. 
Um, and in terms of delivery of the schemes, we are we're reliant on two things essentially. One, you know, they can be delivered through ongoing development, whether that be either direct as part of as part of schemes that come forward, albeit through Section 106 contributions, um, or or we, that we have the route then to 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 gain um, funding through an annual bidding process from the Welsh Government. And I I, I know Councillor Percy has got sort of concerns about that and, and, and officers are more than happy to have those discussions. But as I said, it was just to clarify the point really, Chair, just, you know, we are committed to making improvements and I and, and we'll certainly take on board those comments, but it's just to, to clarify that we need to just clarify the point that we're not committing to deliver all of those routes at the same time. It's it's very much a long-term aspirational plan to improve the network year on year. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Kerry. Lana, did you want to add anything to Kerry's response to Sean? Thank you, Chair. Um, the only thing, I mean, I can see where Sean's saying with regard to just including almost the word endeavour so that there's a slant there that we are, as a, an authority, we are endeavouring to do it, but obviously within the constraints that Kerry has, um, has just um, listed. Uh, thank you, Lana. Uh, Sean, did you want to come back? Um, yeah, on, only briefly. I, I I I missed all of what Annette said, mm -hmm. and I missed the very beginning of Kerry because I, I I cut out the meeting. I'm afraid, um, but I I just wanted to to come back really really quickly on um, on on that uh, on that point that uh, Kerry and Lana just just raised, and perhaps on that word in and 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 the the other reason I I mentioned it is is number one to reflect the aspirations of of members, but the other the other issue is. You know, I've seen I've seen the spreadsheet of all the work that's been done on all of the routes from the last um, app, and actually, we are going through every single one and exploring it and looking at you know its feasibility and its deliverability, and so we we are endeavouring to do it, and I just feel it may even better reflect what our staff are doing as well, and I just think we may be doing ourselves a little bit of a disservice by perhaps suggesting that we're not seriously looking at all of the routes and, and I think that that I just perhaps wanted to clarify that a little bit because I, I wouldn't want us to be uh, you know doing ourselves a disservice where we are making that effort um but but on the other points North I, I, I appreciate that and um Annette I, sorry uh, I, I missed I, as soon as you spoke my my iPad cut out so apologies for that thanks thank you Sean I, I allow Ned to come back because it was brief anyway so back yeah. to Annette and I hope you connection remains for her comments this time. Uh, Ned, please. Thank you, Chair. I thought I saw you disappear, Sean, <laughs> this started. Yeah, um, the, the day after we had a meeting, we had a meeting myself and Mike with you, I went on leave and I've been on leave ever since. So I, I made the promise that I would involve you in a meeting with officers and I will do that now as soon as I'm back on Monday. Um, but regarding the, the cost cutting the services, it's not the only one. There's quite a few, as, as I explained to you, and it does cause major problems. I mean, all we can do is sort of pick at it, but, it, you know, that's a, a discussion I have to have with other cabinet members as well. I can't just grab things or throw things away. That, that's a discussion we have to have. Thank you. Thank you, Annette. All right, Sean. Uh, yeah, no, th thanks, thanks for that, Annette. I appreciate that. It's Again, it's just me flagging those things up, isn't it? Because this is an issue that, that, that I've perhaps had a bit of a forensic interest in. And, um, and, and, and I just... You know, it's my duty as a councillor to sort of flag these things up with uh, with cabinet members, and I just, yeah, I, if there's money coming, it needs to be spent in the in the, the most effective and and prioritised effectively. And I certainly wouldn't want us retarmac in a perfectly good section of route. Well, a, a mile down the line, we've got uh, we've got potholes, and and that's the situation we're kind of in at the minute. So um, we do need to to sort of get on top of that. But no, th thanks all, and uh, um, apologies again for dropping out. No, that's all right, Sean. And uh, yes, of course, it's your duty. Uh, and that's what scrutiny is all about anyway. Um, the next indication at the pre-brief is with Councillor Hill. James, please. Oh, thank you, Chair. Can you all hear me? Yes, fine, Hill. Brilliant. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a very detailed report, both uh, Kerry and Lana. And uh, I think we are in the right direction. And uh, my colleague, Sean, in his sermon, he, he forgive me for saying that, he's a, he's a great speaker, he's laughing. Uh, he, he brought up a lot of detail, which is important. I've got a couple of questions for you both. Uh, as we move forward on this, uh, funding is one, 
um, if we've got aspirations, and that's a lovely word in the English dictionary, if we've got aspirations and we'd like to meet those aspirations, uh, is there any chance through cabinet, leadership of the council and through the chief executive that we can put a bit of pressure on Welsh government to try and get a bit more funding to make these these ideas, you know, affordable and uh, and there. And I'd have to say, um, the chair and I were having a bit of a joke in pre-briefing both, uh, you know, you do get parochial and the chair said, well, you should do that. You all represent your areas. I'll give one example. Um, I was with a professor who was writing a book on Brunel. He was with me last weekend and we walked the length of the, what I call the old rope operated railway up towards Ponte de Ven and up to Valley. Now, that's a very used cycle route, but it's very badly, the surface is awful, you know, it takes a lot of water there. So I'm wondering, in these plans, and maybe, you know, Lana might want to talk to me separately from this meeting, uh, there are ideas coming in in consultation. Uh, will there be chance of improving routes like this? And this is a link, really, from where the Keys is, where our HQ is, if you like, uh, all the way up through uh, the, the wooded area of Britain Ferry, right over the valley, connected with, which is a very good network already of the cycle area in the Avon Valley and beyond. And my last part of the question has been very broad on it. You talk about active travel. That does depend also on public services like buses and trains. And I'm wondering if the announcement yesterday, both, and to be fair to you, you'd have to pass this on, I suppose, I'm wondering if the announcement yesterday that is more public money going into transport for Wales, particularly railways and possibly buses, that we'll see an improvement in some of the public transport areas where we've got elderly people and they're sort of trapped in their houses. They can't get out from valleys or whatever because of lack of public transport. And uh, I appreciate it's a bit of a long question, but uh, I hope you didn't mind me putting it. Thank you both. Uh, thank you, Hugh. Uh, before I bring Kerry or Lana back in, uh, I go back to cabinet member again because she wants to address uh, a point you made. Over to you, Annette. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, regarding the funding, who um, my cabinet colleague Peter Richards will know that uh, as cabinet members rely on um, Carl Clement well, uh, Williams to do um, lobbying for any funding. So maybe you could drop her a line. She's got some superb contacts in the Welsh Government and she's very good at lobbying to get funding for things like this. So maybe you. And, and Sean as well, I could drop her a line and see if she could do anything to help us. Thank you, Annette. I'll do that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Annette. Kerry, then, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, just just uh, just a couple of brief comments from me um, on on the on the funding issue. Um, just to perhaps give the assurance to, to Councillor James that you know we we are constantly applying pre pressure as, as not just individual authorities but but as 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 authorities across Wales in terms of delivering the active travel agenda. Um, to be fair to Welsh government, you know they have put in a lot of money, uh, a lot of committed money um, over over recent years. Um, it has to be said, and and I know Lee Waters, the you know the, the, the member of the Senate, who, who who where this portfolio sits is very much driven. Um, for the active travel agenda, so so I'm I'm, I'm pretty sure that he he will continue to commit uh, to this particular agenda going forward. But um, as you say, Councillor James, it's it's there is never enough money, is there, in terms of what what you would like to do on the ground? But but you know, rest assured that we will continue to lobby um, uh, Welsh government certainly for funding, not just for capital uh, spend, but also as we've already touched on this morning, sort of revenue spend to ensure that we've got that that maintenance position in place as well. Um, I think on the specific point you raise, Councillor James, on on the on the specific route, I think perhaps that discussion is perhaps better outside of the meeting, perhaps with the team, um, that you can perhaps talk through with with Lana and and, and the team in terms of um, uh, making improvements to that particular route. Um, and on the um, on the buses and trains issue, it it is perhaps something that perhaps more sits within uh, Dave Griffiths's area. But what I would say um, is that in terms of planning and bringing. Um, sort of sustainable transport agenda forward. It is all about integrating those transport elements. Um, uh, it is about placemaking, which is very much, uh, you know, a key agenda now at the moment, and that's been driven, and quite rightly so. So it's it's you know we need to move away from that 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 car, you know, the reliance on the car. Um, so when 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 you're talking about larger scale developments, you've got to master plan and have a a, a better broader idea of how. It's all going to fit together. How you know the connections, the linkages, not just within the site itself, but how that site connects 
with you know communities and settlements you know around around the sites themselves so um it is very much about looking at transportation uh, and sort of the active travel agenda uh, as one and that, that having that broader picture um, in, in terms of bringing development forward. I, I hope that sort of answers uh, some of your questions, Councillor James. Hugh, before I come back to you for a response, Lana, did, was there anything you wanted to add on Hugh's points he raised? Thank you, Chair. Only, Councillor James, that um, separate to this meeting, we can arrange another meeting to specifically look at that route in Pontre de Ven. Um, we can look at the comments that have come in and the actual route that you're talking about. Uh, we can discuss that further. Um, and also the other thing then is in relation to, I just reiterate what Kerry said with regard to an integrated network with public transport and cycle routes. And also seating as well is important, I think, along these routes. Um, but I think you know, Kerry touch upon a place making. This is a wider thing, and we will be working with transport um, sections as well within the authority with the local development plan. And as I say, we'd be place making um, and looking at this network um, in an integrated way when we plan for the next uh, local development plan and for the future of the residents as well. Thank you, Lana. Here, were you happy with that? Yeah, thank you, Chair. If I could just uh, add a couple of very quick comments, I won't, won't hog it. Uh, Lana, yeah, I'll take you up on that. Uh, delighted to talk to you, even if it's remotely or we can't meet at the moment. And also, uh, Kerry, just to update you, you are right. The general transport system is in really Dave Griffiths's net. And just to let you know that on the consultation, certainly on the rail network, I have sent in my comments quite detailed because of my interest in railways. That's gone in and Dave has thanked me for that. And I think, you know, on long term, I think it's right that we uh, we, we look at this uh, since lockdown, to be honest. And I think it's to all wards, not just the county borough of Neathcote Hall, but people are walking a lot. Canals, walking locally and they're spotting things, as Lana said, like, oh, we'd love a seat there. We'd like to do this. And certainly, as as you know, everybody said, Sean has said he's, he's, he's a regular cyclist. They're now identifying areas. Oh, my gosh, that could do with redoing. That couldn't do with redoing. It's all down to money, as Kerry said. But I think it's a, it's a very good report today, and I'm going to support it anyway. Thank you. Thank you, Hugh. Uh, Cabinet member, Councillor Peter Richards, please. Thank you, Chair. It's just a question for Hugh. Hugh, what, what route are you talking? Are you talking about the incline route? Yes. Yes, the old South Wales Mineral Railway route, which would run from Britain Ferry right up through Evelvach, if you like, across the valley then to Ponte de Vena, joining what is the cycle routes. It kept to the left-hand side of the uh, of the Avon Valley. The Rhondda and Swansea Bay was the other side of the valley where the Miners Museum is. So the access to that would be through Jersey Park, am I right? Absolutely, yes. Yes, okay. and that's well kept. We've got friends of that and they're doing a lot, a lot of good work there. I, I, I haven't obviously I haven't been involved in some part of my portfolio. If I can have a question for Kerry, um, Chair, with regard with the accessibility of bikes now, Kerry, with electric bikes, okay, you know that's obviously been taken into consideration in in part in the consultation. I would take it, but you mentioned we, we potentially to have networks within networks. We could cover the old county borough because. With electric bikes, now you can get to places you could never get to before. So how much, you know, what are the expectations are the, of the public because of these electric bikes? Is, is that, that a sensible question? Yeah, Kerry? Uh, I, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's a certainly a sensible question. I don't know whether I've got all the answers at this point in time. Um, I, I, think, I think the use of electric bikes uh, certainly, um, I suppose, widens the scope of the routes that can come into use. I suppose the difficulty we have is, and, and again, this comes back to Councillor Percy's points about, you know, the concerns about gaining funding. You know, we, we it, it is a challenge to, 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 to get sort of significant levels of funding out, out from the Welsh Government because um, I, I suppose to date, the focus has tended to be in the, the, the more built up areas where, you know, the bigger, you know, the bigger sort of gains to active travel can be achieved. But you know, we've consciously made the decisions uh, previously in terms of our active travel maps and indeed, you know, no doubt going forward as well, that what we need to try and do is not just look at how we can improve links within the built up areas, but also how we can improve links between our settlements, particularly within the valleys, for example. 
you know, we, you know, arguably some of these settlements are to a degree isolated, and we need to improve the linkages between the settlements, particularly within our sort of elongated valley valley communities. And that's something that's going to be a challenge to us going forward in terms of how we deliver that aspiration. But it's it's certainly something that we're not going to back away from, and 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 we we need to continue to push, and and you know, bringing the electric bike forward might you know, improve and, and enhance that sort of case and that justification to to deliver those more, those 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 longer routes then, as opposed to the shorter in routes within the built up urban areas. And I think what's in, coming back, Chair, on that, I think where, where we put the endeavour, I think that that's critical in that because the expectations of the public going forward you know, is going to be a challenge, I suppose. So thank you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for that, Peter. Uh, Sean, you want to come in on this item? Yeah, on, only only briefly, I suppose, on the on the e-bike um, uh, sort of point. Um, you know, it, it is acknowledged in the in the revised Act of Travel guidance from Welsh government um, that um, e-bikes could perhaps open up more opportunities in rural areas where you've got, as as Kerry mentioned, longer routes or perhaps challenging terrain. Um, I'm not necessarily convinced that that's trickled down into some of the route scoring and auditing, mind you. Um, but um, they have they have referenced it in the guidance now. But generally speaking, um, what you find with e-bikes is it allows somebody who's less fit, less confident, uh, perhaps has a disability to to tackle a route that a fit, healthy, young cyclist would would do a, as a routine. So I wouldn't necessarily say that in in a lot of cases it changes perhaps the expectation and and the the sort of scale of the routes. Um, but it certainly opens them up to more people to use, and I think that well, I think that's great, and and that in in some areas will bolster our um, our case, I guess, for for including routes. Yeah, thank thank you for that, Sean. That's uh, that's more of a statement, and I think members would agree with that. Uh, any other member got a question on this item uh, for the officers? No. Right before I go to. The the recommendation, which is on page 16. I, I got one for, for the officers and for the cabinet members. Um, it, it sort of overlaps with what have been said by many members, but certainly Sean and Kerry, I think you've answered it three times within the, the detailed responses uh, in referring to um, you know resources and finances. And Annette, as a cabinet member, said to lobby Welsh government. Um, uh, but I just like about the messages that we give the general public when they engage in a consultation. I think Sean also touched on this. Uh, I think the messages back needs to be uh, as accurate as we can at the time uh, for them to know where they go in with what they're asking for. Because I, I'll pick up on one which is very close to me in Delice Road, St. Sisters, because I, I live on Delice Road, St. Sisters. Uh, and, and this particular person put in, put some cycle paths to join us for Gunlais, Aslavera, through Sam Sisters, as well on to Gleneath and resolving uh, off road or on the roads. Uh, and then the valleys from Aberdeen to Barnwen. We know we got a very difficult from Crainan to Sam Sisters, which had many fatalities on that road. Uh, and, and he meant to, uh, mentioned use the closure of Nant Ellen, join some of the dots. Now, what, what I'm asking when we talk about finances is that uh, we work in partnership, as you mentioned, with Sustran and others, Welsh Government funding from everywhere. Well, Dean would be very much uh, uh, one of the leads on this rail of excellence. We're talking about a £150 million pound project uh, that uh, hopefully will be delivered mm. to the, the areas of the top end of the Delice Valley and Power West. There, there may be an opportunity of uh, talking within that forum, or unless you already are, in delivering some of these uh, projects mm. that are sitting there. Well, why I mention it, I, I got a little one only from Church Road up to the school that sit, I've sat there for 10 years. So a question to Cabinet as well is the point that as we address these cycle tracks and active travel, uh, do we have a list of priorities as we deliver? Do we go down the list to deliver the next one? I, I think 
you know, to give fairness uh, across the county borough, we should have some sort of form of, we, we know the numbers, we've had these discussions, but we still should be delivering to the valley communities where maybe less people would use the routes, but they still as important. So I just wondered how do they ever stay at the bottom and, and a new route comes in and then we look at delivering on that route, which means they'll never get to the routes that have sat there for, for such a length of time. So those are the, 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 the points I wanted to raise this morning on this particular item. So uh, uh, I'm sure, Kerry, I'll, I'll come to you for a response. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I think, as I've mentioned, sort of at my very, very brief summary at the start, you know, there is a prioritize a prioritization element to the methodology. OK, so before after the consultation and before it is submitted for ministerial approval, we will prioritize the schemes into long sort of short, medium and longer term aspirations. And 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 some of that, you know, in terms of that's I think that's I mean Lana will be able to perhaps give a little bit more detail in terms of how it's worked out. But I think there's a GIS tool that feeds into that process. Um, you know, there's also um, you know you need to I suppose assess the deliverability of each of those schemes. Um, you you then start looking at costings ultimately. Um, so, but I take your point, and I think again this comes back to the point of maybe we need to look at um, sort of the, I suppose, the coastal corridor and the valleys and maybe apply perhaps some different criteria uh, to, to those to those areas. Um, that's something that we can perhaps look into. Um, the other perhaps point I would say um, is that, I mean, you mentioned uh, the, you know, the, the, the GCRE there, uh, Chair. You know, there is potentially, albeit it would be outside of the planning uh, process, but there's potentially community, be community, community benefits um, that that you could negotiate with with a, a developer that, that 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 would provide an element of community benefit, whatever that whatever that might be. It may be uh, sort of cycle routes. So that's something that um, you know, as I said, does fall outside of the planning uh, process. But uh, you know, that's that's an option that could potentially be considered in terms of delivering some of the routes that might not be higher up on the priority list in terms of the active travel schedule. So again, it's something that we can possibly look at. Uh, moving forward in terms of wider delivery. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, before I bring Dean in, um, the, the, the point I was raising, the, the, the response to that particular, uh, I appreciate that is in, in the millions of pounds, because I'm well aware of um, working with the previous leader, Ali Thomas, for the crime and route. And that was compulsory purchasing, all the, the difficulties of achieving it. And that was just over a million pounds in its own right. So I appreciate the financial situation, but the, the address to that particular gentleman or lady, whoever it may be, the comment that has been addressed, and it's in the development of the future routes plan, uh, routes map, sorry, what I'm getting at, that if there's some sort of hope that something is going to be done, that is the answer he's had. Now, I, I would rather have a more upfront, open answer, exactly what you've just said, really. Maybe parts of it could be at some point addressed and dealt with. It just gives some sort of instructions that what you have suggested is really out of the question currently for these reasons. However, maybe a part of it could be addressed as we go forward. Those type of things, you know, and that's all I was suggesting in, in, in the responses. And on the priorities, uh, you mentioned the priorities, what I'm getting at, as we tick off, for instance, as an example, maybe my little one is number 20, Sam Sisters, Delight Road to the schools. Well, as you click off and you've done 18, 19, do you actually get to mine or do some supersede it by popping in as we go along and you never get there? That, that was the real general question of how you get to be done in, in the finances that we're able to generate, uh, apply for and deliver on. That was it. Uh, you don't have to answer that now. Uh, I go to Dean. And maybe then you can touch on that and Lana if you so wish. Oh, but over to you, Councillor Causey, now, please. 
thank, thank you, Chair. I wasn't planning on, on speaking simply because I didn't want to retread uh, the comments that I made uh, last month, I think it was. However, seeing as you mentioned the Global Centre for Rare Excellence, I thought that uh, I'd come in and you're absolutely quite right, Chair. I've had conversations both with uh, Celtic, Celtic uh, Energy, uh, and Welsh ministers about how we address um, so, some of these issues regarding footpaths, rights of way, uh, how we can use this uh, change of use, hopefully, as an opportunity to improve uh, the offering. Um, and to, as the, the comment in the, um, the the conversation said, join up the dots, so to speak. And so, you know, I just wanted to mention that, that conversations have been had. They are being had. You you know where we are in terms of the development at the moment. So there's a few, there's a, there's a few factors um, that we're waiting to overcome or waiting to, 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 to go through the process in order to... to um, uh, take the conversations to the next level. However, the one comment I would retread is uh, that, you know, I understand the issues of funding. Absolutely. They are there, they exist, and they will continue to exist. But from a, a planning, a, you know, a plan as in, planning as in, you know, a plan, not planning, um, but, you know, from, from a perspective of writing a plan, I think we should be ambitious. And we should be bolder. And my opinion is, you, you know, if you ask people, well, do you want 12 short routes, like Steve said, you know, you know, little short one in Seven Sisters, or do you want one really, really good one that's going to connect up the cycleway, you know, in in um, uh, in Powys from Abercrave, uh, from Cauldron down, so you're going to connect that up to the top end of the Delice Valley, to Glynneath and the Neath Valley, well, then people might say, well, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd prefer one real good one rather than 12 where you just, you know, drop the curbs and put some markings down, which actually, you know, even though it's just road markings and just curbs, maybe, it, it does cost a lot of money. Um, so, anyway, I thought I'd make yeah. some comments. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you for that, Dean. Uh, Kerry, did you want to respond or Lana? Uh, yeah, I'll just quickly come in and maybe if, if Lana wants to come in and, and, and add to that, that, that's fine. I mean, I, I suppose it, it, I mean, the questions and, and issues that, that you've both raised are, you know, incredibly difficult to answer, really. I mean, ultimately, it's perhaps about managing, you know, particularly with the public, it's perhaps about managing expectations as well. And it, and it comes down to, I suppose, what the public messaging uh, and, and, the, and the communications that that evolves around it. I mean, we've, we've had recent discussions uh, with Sylvia Griffiths and colleagues about how we promote all of the various work programs, not just active travel going forward. And I, and it, I think there is an incredibly important role um, for, for our colleagues in, in our comms teams to make sure that those messages are the right messages and, 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 and as a consequence, manage expectations. Um, in terms of the document, you know, I, I agree with Councillor Causey. I think, I think you know, we do need to be aspirational or try and be as aspirational as we can be. Um, I, I'm, I think it would be wrong for me to sit here and say to you as councillors, you know, we will deliver all of this in the next 15 years because that, that's not going to happen. There are many constraints to consider, funding being the obvious one. Uh, but we will try and do as much as we can and deliver year on year improvements. And, and the bottom line is active travel is not going away. You know, this is just uh, a snapshot in time for the next sort of essentially three years because there's a three year review built into this process. We will be repeating this in another three years and a three years beyond that. Um, as I've mentioned, you know, there is clear commitment within within Welsh Government that active travel is here and here to stay. So I don't think um, we should be concerned that this is just a small snapshot, a small window of opportunity, because I think it's going to be much longer term than that. And I think, um, but, but I do accept your comments, you know, I, and I do accept you know the acknowledgement of the restrictions that you've outlined, and they are they are quite quite right 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 to to raise that, and it's it's something that we will, as I said, um, endeavour and commit to improving year on year. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Kerry. Lana, please. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, in relation to the comments, um, I think we'll take we'll definitely take on board what you said with regard to being a bit more specific. It's just the time hasn't allowed us to be. So as, as you can see, there's a lot of standardised comments in there. 
um, that the, the public would probably have wanted to have wished to see more specifics. And I think if time allowed, we could have drilled down into that. But our focus was getting their route that they wanted onto the future map, onto the future's route map. So I think that's where we focused, focused our attention, working with Sustrans. And as you know, I've only got one part-time officer, so we were pushing for that, okay? But I think after this consultation, we'll definitely take on board what you've said and we'll see if we can put a little bit more. As I said, I'm not committing fully to that, but I will try and see if we can put a bit more information, okay? Um, and then the second one then with regard to prioritisation, there is a Welsh Government matrix um, and it does look at population density, it looks at distance to an education setting, employment site, leisure, health, transport interchange. And as Kerry said, you know, it could well be skewed more and as you said to maybe the coastal corridor where you'll go higher because these facilities are there and there's more population density. So I'll have a look to see if there is scope, if these criteria are set or if there's a little bit that we can look at maybe differently slightly for the valleys as opposed to the coastal corridor, right, to see if there is any sort of um, flexibility there. OK, all right. Thank you, Lana. Dean, is that a legacy and or you, is it, you want to come back? Right. Uh, thank you for that, Lana. And, and make no mistake, there's no criticism of you or work, your team. Uh, with the size of the team, I think we said in previous meetings, you work extremely hard. Uh, how you get through the work you do uh, with with what you have is is amazing. So uh, we our best, well, certainly my best wishes, I'm sure the committee would agree, uh, goes back to you and your team for the work that you're doing uh, in, in these difficult times. Uh, and you are producing a lot. So thank you for that. Um, why I was referring to that particular point, though, was that Crainland, as you know, uh, when we have consultation, I, we want it to be meaningful in, in, in respect to whatever the Bleed Potalbo Council do. And, I, and there was no sort of, uh, it was sort of constructive uh, criticism in a sense, but trying to say that when we refer back to people who take the time to come through to consultation uh, and then we sort of, like I said, that development of the future route map, Kerry and you mentioned, my Sam sisters, I, I'm sorry I'm being parochial, but getting back to that, now that probably didn't meet your criteria, not yours, sorry, the Welsh Government criteria, so how was it in there? Uh, you know, they're, they're, I'd rather it have not been in there, so I didn't have to explain to the community, well, 10 years ago you said we're not in this, and uh, there's still nothing. That, that is the difficulty that sometimes we will find ourselves in. So if it doesn't meet the criteria, I'd rather explain that, and that goes away, rather than trying to defend why it's in there. That, that was the point I was making on that and the consultation, so that people have felt as if by taking part, they are encouraged to, to, to be supported and explained to at the end of it. But there's no, definitely no criticism to you, Kerry, or the team, or any officer. Uh, Cabinet member, Annette, please. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, Steve, I mean, Kerry and Lana have covered more things, and I, I see your point. Um, sometimes I, I wonder about the way we go to consultation as well. Um, but I will work with the team and see if we can manage the comms better on this so that the public understand a bit more about it because it can be difficult um other than that uh, regarding community benefits look i'll spend anybody's money if they're going to offer it we'll grab it thank you <laughs> thank you annette right I, I i see no further hands or questions so can i can i take members to page 16 uh as in the recommendation uh, this is in two parts, of course, uh, part one and part two, as you can see in the papers today. So can I have somebody to propose uh, that this goes to cabinet in its uh, current form, please? Somebody to Ooh, yeah. There we are. And second, uh, yeah. Then do you pick him up, Flo? Do you have a proposal and a second, uh? Can I just can just second someone yeah. second it again, please? Thanks. Yeah, I'll second it. There we are. You you've got it now, Chloe. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Thank you. 
Right, that'll move us on to uh, item seven, scrutiny forward work program. Um, this is attached for information, obviously, for members' note. Uh, I, I just want to add, uh, take it to Chloe for a little bit of an update on it. So over to you, Chloe, on this item, please. Thanks, Chairs. You said the Ford Work Programme is for noting, um, but members have also agreed that they will be having a regeneration and sustainable development Forward Work Programme workshop in the autumn time, which I'll arrange um, and send the invites out accordingly. Thanks, Chair. Thank you for that, Chloe. Annette, is that the legacy hand or is it a new hand? Sorry, Chair, it's the legacy hand. Uh -oh. That's okay, there we are. It will take me now to the final item. Any urgent items? I have none today. That would uh, allow me to close the meeting. Just before I close the meeting, Cumbria with uh, Wales tomorrow. Don't forget to shout and scream and sing. Uh, have a lovely weekend, everybody. <laughs> Chloe,